Good morning everyone and welcome to worship this Thursday the 23rd of September. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the lights of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Today's Psalm 57 is attributed to David when he was on the run from Saul and hiding in a cave. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour the human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, lyre and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is high as the heavens, your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair, and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13. But when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Someone on the housetop must not go down to enter the house or take anything away. Someone in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that it may not be in winter, for in those days there will be suffering such as has not been from the beginning of creation that God created until now. No, and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short these days, no one would be saved, but for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he has cut short those days. And if anyone says to you at that time, Look, here is the Messiah, or Look, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be alert, I have already told you everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, or in other translations the abomination of desolation, a grim scary phrase like something in a horror story, what Jesus then says resembles movie scenes of people fleeing disaster. Only two weeks ago we were living the non-fictional reality of news video from the 9-11 massacre in America when the unimaginable actually happened. Jesus didn't predict anything specific, though maybe the disciples thought so when Mark was recording their memories. The phrase abomination of desolation first appears in the book of Daniel and refers to the occasion when Emperor Antiochus Epiphanes in 167 BC, had an altar erected to the god Zeus in the Jerusalem temple. He also banned all Jewish religious practices. 
It was a punishment meted out to people in Judea for a coup against the colonial regime by traditional militant Jews who wrongly thought Antiochus had been killed campaigning in Egypt. It seems the Judeans were also at each other's throats, as some had absorbed liberal Greek ideas and language, though without adopting pagan ways, it must be said. Egyptian Jews, after all, translated all Hebrew scriptures into Greek, so expat Jews could read them in their everyday language. But there was no love lost between Hebrew traditionalists and liberal so-called Hellenizers. Both conflicting parties would be as horrified by a pagan altar desecrating the temple as by the punitive mass slaughter and destruction in Jerusalem which accompanied it. Military clampdown in the wake of that failed revolt never restored peace to Judea. Stability was enforced. Resentment and hatred remained under the surface. Minor eruptions were swiftly repressed. This was the setting in which the gospel was proclaimed. Jesus knew his history and knew that grim phrase to remind everyone that history could repeat itself. At that moment he's actually teaching in the temple, warning his disciples about the ever-present threat of conflict with disastrous outcomes. If the worst comes to the worst, he says, don't take sides or resist. Drop everything and get out of there as fast as possible. It's going to be terrible when things fall apart. Just be ready for it. Be alert. A non-violent response is what's necessary. Get out of the way of anyone who wants to make it otherwise. Go into hiding if needs be, just as David did, fleeing from King Saul's murderous rage. Jesus then warns about the dangers of false messiahs. This too would be history repeating itself. Previous bloody revolt began with crowds following leaders claiming divine approval, and look what happened to them, leading God's people astray. This helps us understand why Jesus didn't want those he helped and healed to acclaim him as Messiah during his ministry. False expectations might lead to disastrous violence for his followers. Jesus was determined nobody but he would suffer to reveal God's truth. Only in the light of his passion and resurrection do we acclaim him as Lord and Messiah. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us and your whole church to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this city. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to those for whom we pray. Brenda, Fides, Elizabeth, John, Gareth, Arlete, Jill, the Holder family, Lucy, Lorna and Geoffrey, Anita, Catherine and Peter, Niebe, Audrey, Margaret, Robert and Donna, Sandra, Rhiannon and Jane, and all others who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Fill us with your compassion, that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>